Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the best HVAC field service software for your enterprise. My name is Andrew Bressauer, and I'll be moderating this webinar today. Uh, we're here to talk about the challenges in the increasingly complex HVAC service landscape. Uh, we're a very exciting time and change and in innovation in the HVAC space, but this can be a bit overwhelming for companies when they're sorting through their initiatives. I'm going to start with a little bit about FieldPoint. Uh, we are a leading provider of end-to-end -end field service management, and we're unique because we manage the full spectrum of service life cycle management, including customer and mobile workforce management and asset and warranty management with integrations to your favorite CRM, ERP, and accounting system. Uh, FieldPoint has a solution specifically designed for the HVAC industry and has been experts in the field service management industry for over 16 years. We have hundreds of customers spanning across North America and we help our customers focus on a positive business outcomes and therefore we have one of the highest customer retention rates in the industry. Speaking today is Greg Gerritsen, our VP of Product Development. Greg has been involved in product innovation and development, supporting services, and has developed key messaging for customer and partner marketing initiatives. If you do have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to ask them in the chat box, and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the uh, webinar. Greg? Thanks, Andrew. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to be walking you through a PowerPoint presentation today, just talking through how our FieldPoint software application, really any service software solution that that, uh, that your industrial service business may choose to go with. You know, big questions that you should be asking of, uh, of your provider and you know, big, big functions that you should be looking for as part of your overall solution. So let's take us to the next slide and get started here. So you're gonna see a couple of recur uh, recurring themes as part of today's webinar. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is a big focus towards a couple things. So the first item, I've got five bullets here summarizing the software focuses. So Often people are looking for, in fact, this is, tends to be the biggest thing that we're finding, you know, customers and prospective customers are looking for as part of an overall software package is just what functionality does this product have? You know, show me how I can take a work order, show me your dispatch tools, show me your preventive maintenance and automation tools and such. So these are big areas of focus is number one, having a solution that gives you the functionality you need. The second piece, and unfortunately I'm not hearing this request for, for, for information as, which as, I, uh, as much as I wish I was, is around the technology. You know, how long has this product been on the market or what technology is being used? Am I pigeonholing myself in a solution that is perhaps 10 years old that hasn't had any updates to its technology in a long time? A third point actually similar to the technology discussion is this whole concept around integration. So there are very few products on the market today that'll do absolutely everything that a service and project organization will be looking for. So it's we're finding more and more importance than ever to have a solution that's fully integrating with all the packages that you might be using, be it an ERP system on the back end, a CRM system on the front end for your sales and marketing folks, and so on. The next big one that I could tell you that essentially everybody's looking for is the whole concept of reporting. I just uh, I wonder sometimes if necessarily everyone is asking the right questions around business intelligence, but Everybody is looking to find the best solution they can for getting the most out of their reporting out of their service software solution. But what we're going to dive into today are what kinds of reporting metrics are the most helpful, particularly for an HVAC and refrigeration type business. So we're going to spend a bit of time talking through that today. And of course, the last piece, and I don't think I can stress this enough, is going with a software solution where a provider has the industry knowledge and is constantly developing functionality that is specific to the industry in which you service. So these are going to be some big focuses that we're going to be touching on throughout this, uh, this webinar. And as part of what we thought we would do today is, as you see here on this last uh, bullet point, is we're going to have a focus around six big areas that um, we're seeing a lot more businesses more than ever looking for as part of a field service and project solution. So let's talk about some of the common industry challenges that we see specific to the HVAC space. So these are questions that I would say I get just about every week. It's uh, you know people looking for solutions that'll help you know relieve delays that they have in scheduling. You know the length of time it takes from the time that I deliver a service to when an invoice gets out the door and all the approval processes that must happen beforehand. You know trying to find ways that I can utilize my workforce better 
you know, better tools for uh, you know, assigning the right resource at the right time with the right skill set, with perhaps even the right cost, especially for a business that's using subcontractors versus employee technicians. We're seeing a lot of uh, folks that have you know, lack of productivity in uh, you know, perhaps the off the peak seasons because they're more tailored around you know, spring and summer service and uh, perhaps you know, losing opportunity in, uh, in the down season. A big one that I'm really going to address here in this orange box at the top is systems and silos. So this is something that FieldPoint specifically has really hung its hat on for a number of years now around, uh, you know, I've, I've got this great solution for CRM, but why can't they have any visibility into my service data without having to license third-party software or in FieldPoint's case, having to have duplicate licenses, you know, one for an ap application like ours versus, you know, licenses of a, a, a third-party application. I don't want two people having to log into, uh, into two separate applications to get at the data they want. So we're going to talk through some, some big tips that uh, a lot of our customers today, and even other customers that I've spoken to in my years of doing this, are finding that they're, they're able to employ into their business to save all sorts of headaches and just to make their service system run a little bit better. Let's talk about tip number one here. And this is probably one of my favorite ones that I, I tend to, as, at least as I demonstrate software, I like to start most demonstrations with this because I find this just to be so fundamentally important. Workflow and escalation. So we would define this as any process by which I do something in my service enterprise. So some examples could be, as I go to my next slide here, I've got some examples defined, an approval process. You know, if I've got a, a project out there that requires some approval before I go ahead and get an invoice out the door, collect payment and start assigning resources. Or perhaps it's how I approve a timesheet before that time finds its way across to a third party payroll application. Or it could even be like a high severity call. You know, you might have a, uh, a break fix work order could behave very differently from how a regular preventive maintenance work order goes. So the whole process by which I, if I go back a slide here, the whole process by which I deploy every one of these unique functions is, is vitally important for a business in the HVAC type industry where I have all sorts of different processes that I have to manage. And this happens to be, in our experience of doing this, one of the most nimble type industries where it's tough to pin down all the workflow for every single type of process that I might have in my business. In fact, another big piece of this is this concept we call escalation. So I might not necessarily have a process for everything in the business, but I can certainly employ escalation rules, an escalation being a message or a rule, kind of like an if-then statement, that the system can kick off for me if a certain event happens or perhaps doesn't happen. A classic example is a notification. If I have a high severity call come in, and I dispatch this to a resource in the field, how is she able to see that notification right away, be able to acknowledge receipt of it and confirm that that person can arrive at the site within the next couple of hours, especially if it's a high severity call and I have a service level agreement that I need to abide by. So a lot of times, as we're going back to our you know, first tip here around workflow and escalations is how can my software be nimble enough that as my business evolves, and as I have more and more processes that I'm honing as we use a software application more and more, how can I tailor my workflow to let the system do exactly what I needed to do, not the other way around? So this, at least for FieldPoint, has been a tremendous success for many of our customers, is the ability to tailor the workflow to exactly the way your business operates. So let's talk about the second tip. And this is one that shouldn't be of any surprise to anybody in attendance is a reliable mobile solution. So I would say certainly the vast majority of the HVAC businesses that I would be speaking have some type of mobile solution. On the lower end, maybe it's just a tablet type device with a PDF type document that's editable that I'm using in the field so I can at least collect some data and be able to ship that back to the office with an internet connection. We of course still see a lot of businesses going the full pen and paper approach, especially in the concept or in the way of doing a, uh, an inspection checklist 
There's no easier way to fill out a checklist than with a pen and paper in the field with the obvious drawbacks of how I then digitize that document and get that back into my system for you know, tracking and audit and so on. So to me, I really like to hang my hat on a reliable mobile solution. It is vitally important, uh, important really for any field service type business, especially if I'm out there doing inspection work. You know, in FieldPoint's case, where we do a lot of work with industrial service companies, a lot of these folks have you know, regulatory compliance reporting. A lot have, like in the fire and life safety business, for example, where they have you know, fire marshals doing inspections and requiring documents of the inspection work that they've done in the past. So I really like to focus on this reliability of mobile. And over our years, we've found that for the most part, if you're looking here at this bottom point, this bring your own device. Just about everybody has a cell phone these days. And in almost all cases, it supports iOS or Android devices. In FieldPoint's case, we've strategically gone with a native mobile application so that I can work both online and off. I can support any device, be it an iPad or an Android tablet or you know, really any iOS or Android phone. But this way, at least with an offline device, I can do all the work that I need to in the field. I can use my device to do, you know, the, the um, as I go to my next slide here, capturing of photos. I can scan barcodes. I can fill out a very detailed PM checklist in the field. I can effectively service numerous pieces of equipment with a single mobile device, single checklist. And all the while, what this gives you is, of course, fewer calls to a dispatch center if I have a good, reliable mobile app that I know is updating my field, sending the field resources what they need. And of course, while I use a tool that is, again, I'm gonna really highlight the word reliable in the field, that's giving a good user experience to the technicians or the subcontractors in the field, you can expect fewer calls to your dispatch center. If you're using the workflow and the escalations that we spoke about earlier on the, uh, on the mobile device, you can even coordinate conversation to and from the field or employ a chat feature so that people in the field, if they have questions and if I have like a network operation center or a group that I'm able to communicate with, this is what can save a lot of administration headache between your home office and the team in the field. And of course, with a reliable mobile app, if I'm able to, you know, just in time, collect all of my checklist data, collect my time, my parts used, order parts or, you know, requisition parts as needed, collect my signatures, scan the barcodes. Maybe it's a new piece of equipment so I can scan in a barcode and now get that tracked inside the field point application or essentially any service system that, uh, that you opt to go with, this is ultimately what can save an awful lot of time, give you much better reporting, and of course, get invoices out the door a lot faster, which as we all know, can significantly increase cash flow. So the last piece I'll mention on here, it's the last bullet I've got on this, uh, on this slide, is access to critical data. This is one that I get asked for in just about every presentation I do, is how can my uh, my field team get access to the data that they need in the field. And what I found over the years of doing this is most times the answer from a software provider is, let me show you what the software does. This is what information we give you in the field. Well, really a better question is, well, what data is it that you need in the field? Just about everybody wants service history in the field, but what about the service history? Are you looking to see if you've had that same problem before? Are you looking to see if maybe other customers have had that same problem before? Are you looking for you know, troubleshooting documents? Are you looking just for more information about the customer? Or in many cases, if I scan the barcode of that, uh, that, that device, what if I don't have any service history on that asset? It sure would be nice if I could scan the barcode and now track that piece of equipment moving forward, especially if there's a sales opportunity associated with that. So to me, I, I'd say my biggest word on this overall slide you're looking for is the word reliable, because there are a lot of mobile apps out there, some that certainly are a little more rigid than others. But I find the key is having a mobile app that is hopefully native so that it can work online and off, in many cases where I don't necessarily have a reliable internet connection. But at least this way, I have a reliable app that will capture the data that your business needs, that perhaps your direct competitor might be missing.
So let's go ahead and talk about tip number three. This is one of my favorite ones because I find that this is an area that can make or break many systems. So I've just chosen to show a couple of screenshots here. I've just focused around Dynamics GP and NetSuite, which happen to be big players for FieldPoint. But uh, in our case, we have numerous ERP integrations. We do many on custom bases as well. But ultimately, this tends to be a big part, especially in the HVAC business where a lot of you folks have stock inventory. A lot of you have big purchasing requirements, especially on the installation side or the project side of your business. So let's talk about integration of systems. What I like about HVAC is there's a lot of opportunity for software to run all facets of the business, let alone just service. I would say the biggest one that we would certainly place a lot of value around is the back office ERP integration. It's one thing to have a tool that helps me automate the service and project part of my business, but it's another thing if I can have a salesperson generate a quote, say in something like a Salesforce or a dynamic CRM, or even in an application like FieldPoint, where we have some of the basic quoting and proposal and RFI management, it'd be another thing if I can convert that into a sales opportunity or convert that into a project, have this automatically generate an invoice based upon what was negotiated and agreed upon with the sales organization, and have this find its way across to the accounting system with full line item level general ledger distribution. So as part of a solution like FieldPoint, you know, in our case, we, we place a lot of value in having a full real time, no middleware integration. So I can do things like generate a sales order in the back office system. Or as soon as I close a work order, have this automatically generate a sales order. Now, these are things that can happen very much automatically, let alone having to run like a batch process via like a third-party middleware solution like a Scribe or uh, a number of the third-party you know, middleware products. But this is ultimately what can save a work order from taking three weeks for the time that it gets an invoice into the customer's hands to something that could potentially take a day or even potentially on the spot. By the time the technician gets in their vehicle and leaves, this would create a work order, or rather a sales order, in the ERP application. Another big one that isn't often spoken about is just the data profile. So this is, tends to be what a lot of service software companies will provide in the way of integrations, is we will make sure that you don't have to key in that customer's data twice. So we'll run a polling system in the back end that will just constantly grab new data from the third party application. So in our, in our application, you know, things like customers, addresses, contacts, tax schedules, vendors, you know, pay code, pay class, product line, like these are all items that we certainly integrate with. But a big question that you should be asking your, your providers for is, well, how does that synchronization work? Am I using the same data in the ERP system or am I copying all the data down? So that's why I use the term properly integrated systems. A lot of times, as we all know, that middleware software can be expensive for doing those, those back and forth integrations, but often when they're batch based, you lose that real time integration. Take inventory. I'm sure that not everybody on this call is carrying stock quantities of inventory, but I would guess that some of you certainly are. A lot of you do. I'm sure we can all agree if your inventory isn't real time, in many cases, it's not worth tracking. So in a solution like ours, where our integration is certainly speaking to the purchasing and inventory tables, we just provide views directly into the ERP so I can see your real time inventory quantities. This saves all sorts of problems, but this is all part of delivering essentially a properly integrated system. Certainly a lot easier to provide that level of access than it would be to write you know, back and forth, you know, pushing tons and tons of data back and forth. So in the way of ERP, I really like to hang my hat on those four points of just the data profiles, purchasing, so as a project invoice gets paid in the ERP system, 
why can't the service system now raise the PO and tell finance, hey, we're ready to go and procure all these items to be drop shipped to the customer address? Okay, and of course, a good integration or a properly integrated system should be able to bring things back like a purchase price variance. You know, the service software thought it would be a $15,000 unit. Turns out we paid 16. How are we getting that $1,000 back? Okay, so in many cases, and this is going to tie back to our, our business intelligence module we're going to be speaking about a little bit later. I believe that's tip number six. But ultimately, what you get out of an ERP system integration is really all sorts of tools you can use for data mining your business and getting whatever reporting that you need. In FieldPoint's case, a lot of that job cost really should be coming out of the FieldPoint application or out of your, uh, out of your service application because that's where all the time resides. That's where all the project and work order and contract data resides. So let's talk about CRM software. A lot of customers are, they'll have a full sales and marketing team creating leads, tracking opportunities, managing quotes. Not all service systems have their own built-in CRM application. Most can do the, you know, the basic quoting, proposals, RFIs, submittals, takeoffs, all those. But not all of them will do the full you know, marketing automation. This customer is not yet ready. But I sure would like to add them to an ongoing marketing campaign. And as we all know, there's a lot of CRM software out there. Some certainly a little less costly than others. So if I'm a salesperson and I wish to see, you know, how is that project coming along? That project that, that I sold three months ago that I made a lot of big promises to my client, do I need to log into the, uh, to the service application to see that? Or can I have all of my service data just embedded in my CRM system to really enrich that salesperson's experience? This is actually has been a very big one for a number of field point clients specifically is, I'd really like my sales team to be able to data mine the service application. So if I'm seeing a customer often calling for problems, or if I'm seeing trending data, or if I see that you know, a project is going over budget, maybe I can save the day by introducing a change order or something else so I can recoup some of that margin. A well-integrated CRM software application can sure give you that visibility. In fact, a really good integration can even create those sales opportunities for you based on those workflow and escalation rules we talked about earlier. Take the example of a project. I'm not over budget yet, but based on the detail I'm getting from the field and based on the fact that my system thinks I'm 50% of the way done, yet my project managers tell me I'm only 25, why can't that create a sales opportunity for you in your CRM software? It's one thing for a report to give you access to that data so the human can make a decision. It's another thing if the system creates those records for you. This all ties back to what we would deem to be a properly integrated system. So going to the other side of, of applications, you know, on one side we're talking front office CRM. Let's go all the way back to payroll now. So a lot of service applications, FieldPoint included, has a full time tracking application built in. And like many software or uh, payroll software applications, they often have a mobile app, a portal, something that a user can log into to record their time. Where in most cases, a payroll solution's strength is its ability to process payroll. Albeit many will actually collect the payroll data in and of themselves. So with a solution like FieldPoint or like many service systems out there, well, they'll place a lot of value as well. Why don't you use this application to collect all your time Use the built-in workflow to go through whatever approval process that your business might have. You know, in this case, I'm talking about W-2, you know, technician labor. This is certainly not involving a, a subcontractor. We'll talk about that in a moment. But what about collecting all that resources time in the service application via the mobile device or whatever tool they're using, approve all that time? Why can't all that time just find its way automatically into my payroll application? Because if I can, I can essentially automate what in many cases can be a very time-consuming process of getting all that time across to payroll. 
So going back to this theme of a properly integrated system, it's one thing for a provider to show you a really nice looking spreadsheet that someone will you know, line up the columns and, and dump into a payroll solution. It's another thing to put the time in to build an integration so that I click the button to approve a batch of time and it automatically feeds the payroll. Not only is it less prone to error, but it just saves a resource, what could potentially be hours every week. So to wrap up this tip number three, the last piece I'm gonna mention, this one is largely specific to HVAC and I guess uh, some industries as well, aside from HVAC, but this whole concept of internet or things or, uh, or IoT. This is a big point of conversation that I, tends to be a big point of conversation in many trade shows that I attend. It's everyone's hearing about how many devices are gonna be connected by 2020. They're talking billions of, uh, of devices that'll be connected. So a lot of people are beginning to ask, well, what do I expect of my service software provider? Are these guys telling me that when a, um, you know, a rooftop carrier unit starts to run you know, 10% over heat or runs you know, a few percentage over its threshold heat, that it's automatically going to notify the office? The answer is yes. And these are questions that I would hope that you're having with your service software providers, because this is really where the world is going. In fact, it's already gone there. And as we're seeing more and more device providers putting these applications in and you know, installing Microsoft Azure and these other cloud platforms that ultimately are the servers that are running these IoT platforms, it's not that unheard of now for businesses to start rolling out IoT platforms. So as a device is reporting a problem with an, uh, you know, an error code and whatnot, is my service software provider ready? What have they done already to support IoT? Is this something I wish to get in the market earlier on so I can get there faster than my competitor? A properly integrated and up-to-date, technologically savvy service solution should have all sorts of compelling stories of what they've done in the way of Internet of Things. That was a big tip number three. Let's maybe do tip number four a little bit faster, shall we? So number four, we're about halfway through our webinar. Planning and scheduling resources. This is the case for any professional services business. Let's try to tie this down to the HVAC space. So everybody in the service business in one way or another is looking to create work orders, create projects, create service work, create quotes, and everybody wants to find what is the optimal way that I can schedule my resources to have the best utilization percentage and hopefully the best billable utilization percentage. A good service and project application should be able to show me my installation group, as well as my service group. Now I bring this up realizing that of everybody that's listening to this right now might say, well, hang on, Greg, I don't have installation and service. We're a pure service shop, in which case you can disregard the point I'm going to make and vice versa. A lot of you folks are just doing the install work and perhaps outsourcing the service work to a third party, call it a subcontract. The point I'm going to make here is even if you are using subcontractors, to have a holistic system that does both the installation and the ongoing service in one application can make a world of difference. Take the case of going back one slide, back to the screen here. This is FieldPoint's example of what we call resource planning. This isn't really my dispatch board. This is more just showing me all my jobs I got out there, what labor capacity I need to fill, when I expect these particular tasks and phases of this job to be done by, all the while I can see all my resources broken out by their, their region, their skill set, and so on. And the color coding, of course, shows me where I'm over under in my overall capacity. So a lot of solution providers will bring up the map. They'll bring up the standard calendar showing you all the resource availability. This is when they're scheduled for, we think it's gonna end at this time. 
They can probably scoot across town and get to the next job in an hour, realizing that these things change, realizing that they might be going to the other side of town without realizing that uh, you know, it might be best to actually send Ender across to that job. For whatever reason, it makes more sense to send somebody else. A good service solution should do a number of things for you. As I mentioned, having both installation and service is one thing. It's another thing for these tools to be the next point on my slide here is this drag and drop interface. The reason we call ours our planner versus like what many of my competitors would call it a dispatch board is because in many cases, I'm not ready to do the work just yet. Of course, I'll need to dispatch a resource for something that's happening you know, today or this week. But it's another thing to start planning my next week that I have. You know, I've got these installation folks working on this job that's starting in a week or two from now. I'm just gonna start planning my resources, moving things around, seeing how that impacts my capacity. What I've currently configured doesn't make sense. Why don't I remove that person? Why don't I try to extend the project by a week? What does that buy me? What if I shrink it by a week? What does that buy me? Does that mean that I can then put a couple extra bodies on that job, fulfill the demand that I need? because maybe I have the availability and I can free up resources for the next job that's coming down the line. So a good system really we found is by offering a drag and drop interface where I can just move things around and commit my resources as I see fit, this is a much simpler approach to planning and dispatching resources. So that's just on the planning front. And of course on the dispatch front, I can visualize my calendar, see where my people are, and I can essentially now just drag and drop to dispatch a resource accordingly. And with my workflow and escalation rules, that will go ahead and notify the technician in the field accordingly. Let's talk skill set and geography tracking. Like many companies, and this is starting to tie into the subcontractor conversation, is how do I know I'm scheduling someone that has the right skill set that I need, the right certifications that I need, they service the area that I need, or maybe I don't have anyone available in my territory. I wonder if the nearest branch can free up one of their resources to help me. What are the implications to me by doing that? What kind of cost can I expect on that work order by cross-pollinating my resources? Again, a good service solution should be able to not only make that transaction easy, but should be able to help show you and forecast what potential costs and implications could be, particularly in the way of resource utilization and cost. Okay, and the last point here is this capacity planning. So this is a big one for the installation type businesses out there. In fact, this is a big part of my business is, if we're gonna win a new project, what kind of hours do I have available three months from now? Or rather, what, how many hours do I forecast I'll have available three months from now? Do I have enough installation labor available two months from now to commit to have that project done in time. Why is it that my capacity for March seems so much lower than it was the March before? How can I move things around to start filling my capacity and get the best metrics possible? Again, all part of what we would call not just scheduling and dispatch, but this concept of planning your resources. I do want to mention one more thing, and this won't apply to all of you, but I'm going to assume that it will apply to some of you. What about subcontractors? I'm so sick of my service software provider always talking about dispatching techs. These are employee technicians. I know where they ought to be. I have the power to say, well, show me my calendar to see who's available and override other activities. But a subcontractor, on the other hand, I've got 15,000 subcontractors in my system. How can the system tell me who is the best resource to schedule if I do choose to sub it out? Or how can the system tell me that it makes more sense to give this to an employee technician versus outsource the work? Can the system tell me who the last used vendor was? That's the easy part. So I can effectively just let that, uh, that, that vendor bid. But what if I've got a larger group? Or what if I have like a network operations center or something like that where I'm scheduling resources and, and subcontractors for a job on the other side of the country? So, you know, in our application, here's a, a screenshot that we've provided. We have all sorts of tools that can help me find those resources. But it's another thing if I can cast a net to say, show me within a 10 mile radius 
of that job site, all of my HVAC subcontractors who have a valid passport, valid driver's license, they've gone through a vendor onboarding process, and I know that they are carrier certified, so they know how to do brake fix repair for an HVAC you know, carrier 16NK rooftop unit. So I feel like to me, this is an area that is largely missed by a lot of service software providers out there. A lot will deem to have functionality for subcontractors, but how can I license it so that they can access the application without breaking the bank? How can I effectively schedule them and have them log into a portal or in Fieldpoint's case, log into essentially a, a free mobile app that they can see all their work orders and all their detail and be able to have that conversation with that subcontractor so that ultimately I can scale my business using the subcontractor model. That only works if I can automate that process. So I don't have enough time in today's webinar to go through all the things that in, uh, in our business, what we do for subcontractors, but in the way of scheduling, if that is something that your business uses, these are something I hope that you would ask your providers about. Let's move on to tip number five. This in many cases can be a very big point, especially in the HVAC business or really any business that is generating a lot of its recurring revenue off of preventive maintenance. I'm hearing more and more businesses trying to find ways to up their annual recurring revenue, or in many cases, even their monthly recurring revenue. So if I'm going to build my business by offering preventive maintenance, especially the complexity of service level agreements associated with that preventive maintenance. How can I best automate this process so I can let this part of my business automate or run itself? It'd be one thing for like you're seeing here where I've got these quarterly inspections across a couple different assets. It's one thing for the system to automatically generate the work order. It's another thing if it knows who that work order should go to, automatically escalates itself as they're becoming due if any, you know, any, um, any messages are missed or any particular items are missed. And it's a whole other thing if it can automatically find its way to that technician's mobile device with all the checklists, all the relevant checklists, and all the data and all the steps that that technician or two or three is going to need in order to fulfill that maintenance. And this is a big one. And these are just some of the questions or, or points that I'm often asked. But Greg, what about all the complexities? This is an HVAC business. I'm not delivering bottled water here. There are a lot of complexities to how this can happen. This customer has refrigerant. You know, I've got Freon quantities that I need to track. This is highly regulated. How is your system gonna help me with the automation of this? and know that I need to do, you know, record Freon and refrigerant levels that have their own unique pricing for this unique customer, how can I possibly automate that? Again, coming back to what I call this better PM automation, a good service system should allow you to have any sort of pricing and costing rule with any client. It could be, you know, a certain state gets a 10% discount on the regular hourly labor, or one particular customer has a certain cost schedule associated with how we deal with refrigerant. So again, with this better PM automation, I should be able to load my seasonal inspections or I should be able to have the complexity of, you know, one work order tracking five pieces of equipment and knowing that I need to schedule two technicians, one that's carrier certified, one that's, you know, train certified. Okay, so again, a good PM service should allow me to do multiple types of inspections or you know, routine maintenance, particularly seasonal, which is a big one in the HVAC space, as we all know. I should be able to manage uh, refrigerant and, uh, and Freon and, and things like that if I'm working on pieces of equipment that, uh, that require that. I should be able to have a site consolidated PM work order. So if I have the complexity of you know, some jobs actually require a couple of work orders, or if one would site, I just want to roll all PM activities to a single work order, my system should do that for me. Because if it can, I can save myself many hours, which can ultimately in many cases lead to a much faster scheduling, completion, and billing cycle. 
And of course, the last point being, this should be very much compatible with my own employed self-fulfilling techs, as well as my subs out there. And it should give my resources in the field all the checklists and all the data that they need. So let's move on to our last point. And this is my absolute favorite. And I feel like this is an area that in my own experience is an area that is just missing so many opportunities out there. I can tell you that on every single presentation I think I have ever done in my life on any product in the software space, show me the reporting that comes with this tool. And of course, show me how I can get my own reports out of the system without breaking the bank and breaking my back doing it. A good service system should have a built-in reporting tool that makes it easier than ever to give you the data that you want. Not what your company wants, but what you want. So if the company wants X and you want X and Y, I can use a built-in tool to slice and dice and give me what I need. And I can already hear the questions that a lot of people, especially in like the IT type organization will ask is, well, how can you open up a business intelligence tool and be of 100% you know, certainty that I'm not going to give a technician, a project manager, an analyst, anybody more information than they're privy to see. So again, as it pertains to business intelligence, a good service system should allow you to set up the security and permissions exactly the way that you want it. Techs can only see this. Except these three techs are my senior techs, they can see a little bit more. A good service system, you should be able to give a BI tool like this to every user in the business, regardless if they use it or not, and they will only have access to the data that they're permitted to see. And the big question that I'll often ask people as they're evaluating systems is, you know, of course the big questions of you know, what are your reporting expectations? What are things that you're looking for? But the, the question I'm always going to ask people is, you know, is there a mobile element to it? Are you looking for access to these reports on your handheld devices? Do you want to empower your technicians to have this level of access in the field? So in this case, you know, here in FieldPoint, where I can access all my BI dashboards directly on my mobile devices, but how do you manage exception reports? Are you just looking for the system to tell you that you know, here are the projects that require attention? Or is it another thing to have like an exception report dashboard that says, good morning, Greg, here are the three work orders that are now past due. These need to be dealt with right away. Or better yet, here are three work orders that are about to become past due. Let the system tell me versus me go fish for it in a report. So this takes you full circle all the way back to that workflow and escalation, which is why we started the webinar on that particular topic. It's that kind of workflow and escalation rule that can drive your reporting. If I have a project that is on the trend to the negative, how can the system via a business intelligence tool tell me that I have a problem coming up? Again, one thing for me to show you a report that gives you exactly what you're after it's another thing if the report finds you, and typically this is done in the way of what we call an exception report, the second point here on the slide. So business intelligence, like everybody's looking for, is I want my real-time job costs. I, know ex I want to know exactly where we are on this install project. I want to know exactly where we are, cost, revenue, margin, and estimate-wise on this maintenance contract, on this work order, and so on. A good tool should be able to show you that, but I really like these these middle two, or rather these middle three points. Exception reporting, so the system will tell me in a dedicated view things that require my attention based on any rules that you determine. Trending information. I'm often asked about this, and it's funny, as you peel the question back, you find a lot of confusion. Well, what am I gonna do with this trending information? It sure would be nice to know if this customer is having a lot more problems with the exact same unit than the guy just next door. It'd be another great thing for the system to prompt me of, hey, you know, this is going to be the fourth repair. Are you sure we shouldn't just swap a part out? A good BI system should be able to tell you trending information, let alone have access to that data. It's another thing for the system to tell you 
existing trends. So if you have a certain criteria, if this happens three or more times in a two month span, or the number of you know, after hours calls that I have that meet this particular criteria, put this into an exception report for me to say, this is a trend that has just happened. And use the same tool you'd use to run any report out of your service business to tell you that data. That's what a good BI system should give you. And of course, going back to one of my earlier points that CRM integration, there's so many missed sales opportunities when a lot of people are using a service application. A business like mine, maybe not necessarily in HVAC, but there will be similar examples of, you know, if I have to train this customer three times, or if I'm getting a, a whole lot of inquiries, especially, you know, if I get a non-billable inquiry into my, my service department about a, uh, an AC unit that I install, I, I keep having to find myself doing training. Or if a certain type of break fix work order keeps coming up, and perhaps there's a sales opportunity, maybe I can get them on a maintenance schedule. Maybe there's just a training thing. Maybe I can schedule a block of time to go and train this resource to give them what he or she needs. Again, one thing for the sales or the salespeople to, to data mine the service business to find this, it's another thing if the system can create these opportunities in the first place via a workflow and escalation tool. And lastly, utilization. Everybody's looking to find it the best way they can to have the highest utilization rates and percentages of your staff. Any good system should be able to show you by region, by job type, all your utilization rates, be it your billable, non-billable, your travel utilization, so on. And again, a good system should be able to show me, here are some interesting ups and downs that you might not have known about. For some reason, Greg spends 30% 30, 30 more time in the car than Andrew does. Why is that? Why is it that Greg's utilization is down so much from the previous month is it because he was doing a lot of in-house training of new employees? Is it because we took him off of a job to go work on something else that perhaps wasn't billable? A good BI system should be able to tell you what the implications of that decision will be to your business. And an even better system should show you proactively what will happen if that decision is made. So like I do in just about every single sales presentation that I do, I always begin my demo and I end my demo or my presentation on reporting. This webinar is going to be no exception to that. I'm going to now take any questions that you've got. I think I've seen a couple come in here. I'm going to take a look at the chat and I guess a couple of you have actually emailed me directly. So I'm going to take a look at, at uh, the chat window here. Okay, so I had a question of, does this work in conjunction with QuickBooks? It does, so that would be one of many of the integrations that, uh, that FieldPoint offers. Okay, is there a presentation for those of us who already have uh, ESC? Much of this is redundant for us. There is, I, um, I would still, for, for Sherry, if you wanna give us a call after, we can talk about that. I can get you exactly what you need if, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, I've got my contact info here on the screen. If you call our sales department, anybody here should be able to help you with that. Okay, there's been a request around um, showing information specific to the plumbing business. So I get that there's a lot of similarities in HVAC between plumbing and, and HVAC, but we'd be happy to do another webinar and provide a presentation on that. I did get an email with a couple questions too around you know, how many companies are actually using IoT these days. So we, we sort of touched on this earlier, but not a lot. But a lot of the bigger companies, or even I would say a lot of the companies out there looking to be at the forefront of this technology, we're getting a lot of requests these days to just understand what FuelPoint has done in the way of IoT and where we feel the, the providers are in, um, in this becoming more of like a ubiquitous type of offering. It's not there yet, it's not 100%, but um, more and more businesses are at least planning for it, let alone actually starting to deploy IoT functionality. So we've got customers that are deploying IoT. Um, we've got a number of providers now that are integrated with. 
And uh, if that's something you're interested in, just by all means, give us a call. We'd be happy to, to divulge further. There was a question around the size and scale of companies that we often work with. This one varies significantly. Uh, we've got your 15 technician type company. We've also got your 300 or 500 person in an office company with you know 20,000 subcontractors across the country. So it, this can vary a lot. But um, I guess tying back to the webinar theme of you know what are questions you should be asking of your service provider if it's us. The question should be, can you support a business that has 15 techs? In our case, yes, but not all providers will necessarily work with a business of that size, be it too big or too small. Uh, there was one more question around vendor onboarding. So we talked a little bit about this. I didn't see anything about vendor onboarding. How does FuelPoint manage this? So this is probably gonna be best saved for either a demo that you'll find in our website, or just contacting us, and I'd be happy to provide you with a walkthrough of how the um, how vendor onboarding works. We have uh, vendor portals. We have a lot of workflow built in for managing subcontractors, and we also provide, as I mentioned, like a self-service portal that many customers or vendors will log into to essentially upkeep their vendor credentials, manage their skill sets, update their certificates, and so on. So unless there are any other questions, I really want to thank you all for your time today. Um, if you have any questions for us, by all means, contact uh, the number and the email address you see here on the screen. We're always happy to help. There will be a recording of this, uh, of this webinar made available to you, and so this will be sent to you, and we'll also make this slide deck accessible uh, to you as well. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.